Hi guys, this is Ivy from Wompley here to show you how to fill out the Paycheck Protection Program form powered by Cross River to hopefully make things a little bit easier. Our focus in this particular video is going to be on what do you do if you're a company that does in fact have employees and needs to fill out the second draw PPP. Let's go ahead and get started. When you first end up in the Cross River form, it's going to look like a page like mine, where it's going to say Step 1, tell us about your business. Let's enter in this information together. It's going to ask for your business legal name. a DBA name if, if applicable, business email, business phone number, and then it's going to ask us for some additional information. It's going to ask for your entity type. We simply click on the drop down and we're going to pick the one that's most applicable to us. In our particular case, we're going to go with s -Core. Next, it's going to ask for our EIN. As always, any and all information that I show you guys directly in these types of videos is 100% falsified. We just want it to be as close to your experience as possible. Once you've gone ahead and entered in that EIN, it's going to ask you for your business start date, month, and year, number of employees, state of incorporation, or where are you located. Scroll down until you find the correct one. And then it's going to ask you to search for your NAICS code. If you're not sure what your NAICS code is, it's totally okay. You can simply click on this bright blue hyperlink. It opens up a new tab and allows you to find it. However, as soon as you get that NAICS code, go ahead and enter it in as shown. Next, it'll ask is this a franchise, yes or no, and have you previously received a PPP loan? In our case, we're going to go ahead and click yes. Then it's going to say, did you receive your PPP loan with Cross River Bank? Yes or no? In our particular case, no. And then how much was the loan amount for? Go ahead and enter that in directly using the, uh, the documentation that was given to you when you were approved for your last PPP. Once you've entered that into the best of your ability, we're going to go ahead and go down to business address. And then we're going to select it from the drop down. That way it automatically fills out all the information. Please make sure that you select it from the drop down. That way it's going to make your life so much easier later. And then we're going to press next step. After that, it's going to ask us for some owner information. So your first name, last name. Will this be the primary contact for this application? Yes or no. Your email address, your social security number. As mentioned, any and all information I show you guys directly in this application is 100% falsified. It's just to make sure that it's as close to your experience as possible. Percentage of ownership in the company. Your date of birth. Your mobile phone number. That way, in case you have any questions with your application, they can actually get a hold of you. And then it's going to ask for things like your position within the company. In our particular case, it's owner. Your veteran status your gender, your race, and your ethnicity. Once you've filled all of this out to the best of your ability, it's then going to ask for your home address. If it's the same as the business address, go ahead and click on this little button right here. If not, go ahead and enter it in just like we did on the previous page. If you have more than one owner, go ahead and simply click this bright blue add additional owner button. Then whenever you're ready, go ahead and click next step. This does take a couple of minutes. What they're doing is validating your information before they go ahead and move on with your account. Then you're going to end up on a page that looks just like this, where it's going to ask you to go ahead and save your link that we can come back to your account at any point in time to be able to continue filling out your application. Then we're going to fill out the questionnaire together. So, question number one, is the applicant or any owner of the applicant presently suspended, debarred, proposed for debarment, declared ineligible, voluntarily excluded from participation in this transaction by any federal department or agency, or presently involved in any bankruptcy? Yes or no? Has the applicant, any owner of the applicant, or any business owned or controlled by any of them ever obtained a direct or guaranteed loan from the SBA or any other federal agency that is currently delinquent or has defaulted in the last seven years? Yes or no? Is the applicant or any owner of the applicant an owner of any other business or have common management with any other business? If yes, go ahead and list all those businesses. In our case, no. Is the applicant or any owner of the applicant owning 20% or more of the equity of the applicant presently incarcerated or for any felony presently subject to an indictment, criminal information, arraignment, or by other means by which formal criminal charges are brought in any jurisdiction? Yes or no? Within the last five years for any felony involving fraud, 
bribery, embezzlement, or a false statement in a loan application, or an application for federal financial assistance, or within the last year for any felony, has the applicant or any owner of the applicant been convicted, pleaded guilty, pleaded nulla contendere, or commenced any form of parole or probation? My case, no. Is the United States the principal place of residence for all employees that will be used in payroll calculations including in, included in this application? Yes or no? In my case, yes. Is the applicant a franchise that's listed in the SBA's franchise directory? Yes or no? Did your business experience a 25% gross revenue decline in 2020? Yes or no? In my case, yes. And are you a highly seasonal business? Yes or no? Then, it's going to give us a quarterly loss question. In which quarters did your business see the greatest decline in revenue? Q1, 2, 3, or 4? In my particular case, I'm going to go ahead and click Q2, and we're going to hit Next. After that, it's going to ask us for the loan purpose. This is anything and everything that we're planning on using this Paycheck Protection Program loan for. That could be payroll, lease or mortgage interest, utilities, operation expenditures, property damage, supplier costs, protection expenditures, or other. In my particular case, we're going to go ahead and click payroll. Then it's going to ask for your previous SBA ID. And how do you file your taxes? As a corporation, as a partnership, as a nonprofit, or other? In my particular case, we're in where we're an s -Core. we're going to go ahead and click as a corporation. Now we're going to scroll down. It's going to ask us for our annual gross payroll amounts. Please select the payroll and the payroll end date. All documents and all amounts should correspond to this pay period. So we can go with 2030, uh, 2 31 2020 or 2 31 2019. I'm going to go ahead and pick 2 uh, 12 31 2019. If you're an employer and file Forms 940, please refer to Part 2, Line 3 of Total Payments to All Employees from your Form 940. We're going to go ahead and we're going to enter that into the best of our ability. If you report any self-employment income on File a 1040, refer to Line 31. In my case, it's not applicable. If you report any income as a partnership, go ahead and enter in Line 14. Again, that's not applicable to me. Then, it's going to ask for our payroll calculation adjustments. So, it's going to ask for our group health insurance, our retirement benefits, our state and local taxes, portion of wages in excess of $100,000 a year. This will be the total amount of your, of your payroll that it goes towards individuals who you pay more than $100,000 a year towards. We're going to scroll down. From here, because of all the information we've entered in so far, it calculated your average monthly payroll and your maximum loan amount. After that, it's going to have us enter in our quarterly loss verification. So it's going to have us enter in our revenue for Q2 of 2019. And then it's going to have us enter in our revenue for Q2 of 2020. As you can see, we entered in this information and there is a 25% discrepancy. So we're able to continue moving forward. After that, it's going to go ahead and ask for account and routing information. So it's going to ask for your routing number, your re-enter the routing number, your account number, and to re-enter your account number. Once you've gone ahead and entered in this information to the best of your ability, go ahead and click Next Step. What they're going to do from here is they're going to validate their information. It may take up to 10 seconds. Again, please do not refresh the page. After that, it's going to have you confirm the business and owner information. So it's going to have you look at the legal business name, DBA name, business email, business phone number, address, any additional business information we entered in, so the organization type, your EIN, business start date, number of employees, state of incorporation. Then it's going to have you look at your loan information, so purpose, pre-adjusted payroll amount, average monthly payroll, total loan amount, and last but not least, your owner information. Make sure that everything is correct. If you do have to go back in and change any of the information, go ahead and click right here where it says edit. After that, it's going to ask you to agree to the application terms. It's going to have you click right here to be able to confirm your identity. And then it's going to say, I understand that by checking the box below, you're confirming that, to the best of your knowledge, the business information that you provided is accurate and complete, that you have provided all owners of the business who own 20% or more of the company and or a single control person with control over the entire entity, or in the event that there's not a single owner over the threshold. 
The responses to the eligibility questionnaire were accurate and complete. The information provided in the PPP calculator is accurate and as per the instructions laid out in the calculator. This business is not ineligible. Wampley hereby provides its written instructions to Cross River and its affiliates, agents, or third-party services to obtain business and or credit reports about this particular company. You hereby provide... Uh, my written instructions to Cross River under the Fair Credit Reporting Act permitting Cross River and its affiliates, agents, or third-party agency service providers to obtain one or more consumer reports. You're going to click right here where it says, I am electronically signing the authorization above and that you give permission to Cross River Bank to obtain your credit report. After that, it's going to say, I understand that based on the information I provided, you will need to provide the following. Your driver's license, avoided check, your IRS Form 940, your Fe uh, February 2020 bank statement, and your IRS Form 1120. So, then it goes into some information about ineligible businesses and what that actually looks like. Scroll all the way down to the bottom, press I confirm and agree to all of the statements above, and click Submit e-sign. Again, it takes a couple of seconds. Please do not refresh the page. After that, it says, congratulations, you've almost completed your application for the SBA Paycheck Protection Program. The last step is to upload all the required documentation. Again, it gives you the link to be able to copy this so you can get back into it at a later time. I strongly recommend copying this link. This is going to be how you get into your application moving forward as it does not have a password and or login. Now we're going to go ahead and upload the required files. It's going to say click on choose files to upload. We're going to enter in our driver's license avoided check, IRS 940, or your 941, February 2020 bank statement or other proof of your business, and your IRS form 1120. Let's go ahead and click choose files. Let's find them all. Let's find our driver's license right there. It does have to be full color. You have to be able to read it. You need to be able to see all the edges. Next, we're going to do our avoided check. So I have this set as blank check right here to make it really easy for me to find in the system. Next, it's going to ask for our IRS Form 940. I'm going to go ahead and do my 941s. Okay. Then it's going to ask for our February 2020 bank statement or other proof of the business. Again, I'm going to go to choose my files. I have this in my nifty bank statements folder. There's my February 2020 bank statement. We're going to go ahead and press upload. Then we're going to get our IRS form 1120, scroll up, choose your files, go back to my documents, there's our form 1120. I'm going to press open. Once you've gone ahead and you've entered in all of your information, then you need to make sure that you select the file types. So this is your driver's license, this is your voided check, this is your IRS 940, 940, 940. 940, your bank statement, and your form 1120. They have you actually click these buttons to be able to select them from the drop down to make it really easy for their system to be able to validate everything. Once you verify that everything has a check mark next to it, go ahead. Once you've gone ahead and clicked, are you ready to submit? It's going to bring up this particular thing right here where it says, are you ready to submit? This cannot be undone. Take care and review and confirm that your information is accurate and clear before submitting and that documents correspond to the exact form and period requested. Again, this cannot be undone. Make sure that everything is correct before you submit. After that, you're going to go ahead and press yes. It takes a couple of seconds for it to be able to go into the system. Again, please do not refresh the system. It does take some time. And then it's going to take you to a page that looks just like mine, where it says, Application complete. Thank you for your loan application. Cross River is working on processing your application, and you will be in touch soon. In the meantime, you can check the status of your application with the link below. You can click here to see additional status details. At this point in time, what's going to happen is you're actually going to receive an email directly from this particular lender in case they have any questions, comments, concerns, or need additional information from you. However, if you do run into any problems, feel free to reach out to us. Thanks so much.